Hello. Is it Latouche? Yes. I haven't hello. spoken to you privately for a while. Mm -hmm. So I you? thought I would say hello. I am fine. How is your granddaughter? Oh, I spend way too much time with her, I think. Oh. But she is a miracle. She will become someone very important. Mm. How is the chattering going? You have like, uh, Kalish also chattering? Kalish? Arusha, those are the three that are channeling the most, yes. I am, Kalish is, Arusha is, mm -hmm. and um, Zhejian Jean is, Zhejian. or Georgiana as they call her on earth, Georgiana. Georgiana, Georgiana but her name is Zhejian Jean. Sounds very French. Um, perhaps. But she is a, a, an entity that is cha being channeled as well. Mm -hmm. But they call her Georgiana mm -hmm. from the, all the J sounds. <laughs> they cannot remember Zhejiang, so mm -hmm. they say Georgiana. I found that very interesting. Mm -hmm. I like the name Georgiana, actually. Yeah, be, be, you know, it's so much easier for us to adapt the names to our own language. Kind of. Well. So there are now two men and two women f or females mm -hmm. channeling from our three planets. I guess I'll turn. Uh, three. Uh, uh. What are you studying these days? Uh, I'm mathematical algorithms of star systems. And what are you celebrating these days? Oh, I'm celebrating my granddaughter many times, and I, I have graduated from my last course about one of your months ago. So I have celebrated, and my wife has uh, been celebrating one of her uh, advances. That is good. And I have a, um, a son that has also graduated one of his courses. So we have much to celebrate. Oh. He has also taken on a significant other, as you call it. Mm -hmm. So this is his second. So he has three more to go if he wishes. Uh-huh. And how many do you have to go if you wish? I can go to five. I have three. Uh -huh. Two females and a male. Uh -huh. Nice. Yes. Uh, how do you call our solar system? Uh, is there like a universal, universal name for our solar system? Well, that we do have a name for your solar system. There's a name for all solar systems. But we mostly put them in quadrants uh -huh. and sectors and things of that nature so that they're easily referenced. What's our sector and quadrant? We're your sector 545. Is it universal or is it only for your planet? That is only for us. Ah. I see. Yes, there are many sectors. So if I am lost in the galaxy, how would I ask you know, directions to my place? That would be a totally different answer. We wouldn't give you a sector for that. We would give you a, a map for that. Uh -huh. But it would be a holographic form, of course. But it would show you exactly where to go. It's pretty much a straight shot from most places, uh -huh. except you have to avoid the planetoids, the asteroids, the planets, the suns, you know, the oh. things that occupy space. Also black or dark matter, as you call it. Some dark matter is dangerous and you have to avoid it, so... But how would I ask for directions to my place? How would they call it? It would be a mm, galactic uh, map, I guess. No, how would they call our sun? sun? Oh, it's called Vensin. 
would it be events in anywhere in the galaxy? How would it, maybe, maybe there is some famous sun which everybody knows by universal name, like Alpha Centauri or something. Yes, we use your words sometimes, but when, but only when we're talking to you. My question is, uh, I would doubt that our sun is that famous. Possibly we have we are in the proximity of something more famous, which everybody remembers in the galaxy. Yes, right. But every sun has a name. Uh huh. It, because it belongs to the solar system, so I mean, just uh, Venson is actually just means sun, so it's. I mean, there's many Vensons, but yours will have an appropriate name whenever we get around to it, I guess. So, but I've, you do, your solar system does have a name. Uh, so Alpha Centauri or Proxima Centauri is the closest star to us? I don't remember. Yes. Do the, does it have a universal name in the galaxy? Mm, yes. Many, everyone names their stars. Everyone names their, their sky. So I'm talking about the universal name, which everybody knows by the same name. Ah. Oh. Uh, you mean what the, we call Alpha Centauri? Oh, the whole galaxy. Is there a name which is famous to the whole galaxy? So I would say, I'm Proximor, I'm in proximity of such and such famous star. Exlorca. Which one is that? Alpha Centauri. Exlorca. Exlorca? Ex yes. Hmm. So that would be a universal name known in the galaxy? Yes. Exlorca. So I'm close to Exlorca. Hmm. Yes. Give me directions to x and then I will uh, find my son. Interesting. How would I give you directions? No, no, I would, I would say that if I travel. Ah, if you were traveling, yeah. it would be easy. You just head in that direction and you will eventually get there. Avoid all the things in, the, in between. So, uh -huh. I don't know how to give you directions other than that. No, no, I'm not asking you for directions. I would say... If I travel, I would ask that. Ah, I see. You are an interesting person. You ask very weird questions, in my opinion. But weird is good. I'm just... I'm a good weird person. I'm just extrapolating my Earth experience. If I go into a known city, how do I find a way back? I see. Understood. First, I look for some sort of marks of the place, have like a tower or a big building or a river and then you remember the name of the river and say where is that place and people point that. I see. I understand. So are you wanting to find X Florida? No, I'm, I'm good now. I see. Just wanted a name. Ah, okay. So then if I travel I can ask for a name. I want that blah blah. Ex Lorta. Ex Lorta, yes. And they will point and I will fly there. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, are you involved in the colonies these days? I will be, but I, I visit them still, but I do not, am not allowed to be in them. Uh -huh. I can be around them, but I cannot be in them. They see me as a disruptive force because people would know who I am for the most part uh, because of my personality. Yeah, uh, was it? No. Uh, you're nice, people like you, especially the colony people like you a lot. Uh, I wanted to ask about um, that visit. I had a nice visit by someone, I forgot the name. Was it? Your friend from the blues, who was in my body. Kalish. Kalish. Yes, the one that came into your arms and hands and things. Yeah. Yes, he does the same with Gabriel. I'm wondering what's going on with him, really. Gabriel or Kalish? Kalish. I'm wondering what's going on with Kalish, because he doesn't seem to want to speak through anyone. He wants to be in their body, but he doesn't want to speak. And the whole idea of being in the body is to want to speak and give information. However, he has not given any at this time. Ah, all right. I invite any of you guys of your species to visit me again. That was, uh, I'm hungry for 
more high dimensional experiences and more proofs of that it is manifesting. I want more manifestation. So mm -hmm. I would invite people from your civilization to visit Kalish and any of you four or any others, you know, in a positive way, of course. Okay. Yushara might want to come to visit you. Who? Yushara. Yushara. All right. Who is she? She or he? It's a female. Yeah, I love females. Yeah. I would be more comfortable if a female entered my body. Nice. Okay. Yushara. I will ask her. You. Or Zhizhenzhou. But uh, she is usually busy. Yushara. Yushara. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anything you can tell me about her? You sure? She is already channeled through people on your planet. Is she beautiful? She is very beautiful. And very warm and understanding. She is a very calm and loving spirit. Much like myself. Not quite as... Um, not quite as outgoing, not quite. But she, she does have a wonderful, warm sense about her. So I hope she does come to you. What's your relative age? Relative. I, I, I think she's just around a hundred. Relative. Yes. A relative means relative to others. Ah, she's, Old, young, middle. She's fairly young. Fairly. She's in the one first third of her life. Oh, wonderful, I see. So her authorization is just to speak to Earth? Yes. Uh-huh. Wonderful. Yeah, I would like to, I would love to have that visitation and conversation. I will see if she is available for you. Wonderful. Uh, what's up with Gabriel? Gabriel. Gabriel is in a state of confusion at this time. Yes, his fourth dimensional energy is high, but he has no grounding. It, he grounds for a short time and does not like it. He does not like being grounded. And the reason he does not like being grounded is because he's not grounded in, with the right people. Uh-huh. And since he is not grounded with the right people, his work people are not the right people to ground with. So uh -huh. He does not even socialize much there, and so he does not like his workplace. And he would prefer to stay in fourth dimension while he is with them. And the, the more he stays in fourth dimension, the harder it will be to, to get to the third dimension. The third thought processes densities, whatever you call them. He, need guide, he needs guidance. Uh, I have tried. Uh, Kalish is with him a lot, but he, they have trouble sometimes. Uh, so, he needs guidance which is more suited for the situation. Yes. How, the, who, how could he get proper guidance from a person who would be an expert in such relations? I will see what that I can do without that. All right, thank you. Um, what else do we need to discuss? I was uh, inviting elves and dolphins to speak through the dream. And also, yeah, let's stop on that and I'll go to the next question next. So, dolphins and elves. Is it advisable for us to speak to elves? You can. Um, it depends on the elf, of course. Are elves related to L? No, not really, no. Are elves related to Yael? <sighs> well, in a very distant way, yes. Okay. All right, so... Um, do you have a way to pass our invitation, or they already received? Actually, elves were a special creation, so they're not really related to a lot of other things unless they became related to it later. Uh huh. So they were a special 
creation for Earth and for planets that needed guardians of their trees, plants, and animals. And things ah, like that. I did. So they were created for each individual planet to, to be able to take care of it in their own way. Uh -huh. Every planet is different that has plants, animals, and trees, and things of that nature. So, and mountains, and rocks, and what. But anyway, um, so they were designed specifically for this planet, and for planets just like this planet. What's the difference between elves and fairies? Fairies are much lighter. They're not connected to the earth as elves are. They can move in flight from uh, one place to another, which makes them less grounded, of course. But they are the bringers of individual emotions to even animals, plants, and humans. Ah. So elves are guardians and fairies are creators? Creators, yes. They would be creators in some senses. They help, actually elves help to create as well. Ah. Alright, so can you pass our invitation for the elves to speak through Jim on the webinar? Didn't, oh, a fairy spoke through him once. Yes, didn't? twice. Yes. As elf, I'll, I, will, I will pass that along. Yes. Thank you. They are much less likely to speak than a fairy. Oh. Because fairies are much happier in some senses. Elves are not unhappy. They're just very grounded and very decisive about what they're going to do. Meaning that if they decide to speak, they will. If they decide to speak, they definitely won't. All right. I will give them the rational. Uh, the rational is that most of our members on the side are really concerned about ecology. Yes. So the topic of ecology might unite elves and members of our side, and we can Ooh. discuss that. Yes. Oh, that would be a topic that they would like. Yes. They would definitely like that topic. So I would. Um, I will move on to. There is a specific elf that is a leader of many elves in a community not far from here. So I will definitely speak to him and see if he will represent his community and um, for this area. And also, we are, some of us are tree, tree huggers and we give trees Reiki. So that would be another real, relatively interesting topic. To yes. <laughs> Yes, he would, he would wish that more, more people would do that, I'm sure. All right. I'm sure that he would wish that. Um, dolphins, can you pass our invitation to dolphins to speak? I do not know how they would speak to you, but um, I, I do not know if they know English. How about whales? I will find out if any knows English. Because I do not see any dolphins that know the English language that well. Uh, obviously, dolphins don't, but uh, what channelings of dolphins in the past by mm -hmm. others? So Did they speak English? They channeled English. I English. don't know how did they do that, but I guess they used some sort of interpretation way. Well, we could probably help them with that, I'm sure. Yeah. We'll find a way to connect to them. Yeah. Maybe throw blues. You're taking in a lot of energy in your head. Ah. Oh. You've been doing a lot of thinking and... Did I? Oh, yes, I did. Okay, so next question was Elohim. I keep asking about them and get some answers, but sort of uh, more and more people are kind of reminding me that we want to learn more about Elohim and invite them to speak. Elohim is a collective, of course. Oh. Uh, Elohim is very high spiritual energy. They are in, they can become in a form, but they do not have to stay in a form. They do come in forms at some times to be recognized as who they are, 
because there are some uh, ascended masters that be are part of Elohim um, that came from a very high spirit to come to the earth to teach things uh -huh. and then return to the Elohim collective. Uh -huh. Their language is on ancient in a, is a part of ancient earth and part of modern channeling languages. They've given their language to several hundred people, but not all of them have come forth yet. The reason for this is that they do have a message of their own for the earth. And when enough have come through to channel them, they will give that message in an appropriate way. Oh, what a nice. Thank you. That helps a lot. Uh, I assume that Elohim grew up, ascended from... In, a, in the same way other civilizations did. Like they were third dimensional, they went to fourth and so on until they became very high. Is it the right assumption? Actually, they were one of the few that were born into fourth dimension. So, but most go, as you said, through third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, uh -huh. as we know it. They started as a high three, early four. Uh -huh. So yes, they did have density, they did have a body, and they did have some connection to third dimension. However, it was not as strong as what humans feel, if I can explain it that way. So, when they were in the body, was it bipedal? Two hands, two legs, and the head? Yes. It was basically humanoid, but not humanoid in the sense that it was higher dimensional. It did not start off as third dimensional. So, right. so it was, it's very hard to explain because they did have a density of body. They did have hands, feet, legs, eyes, nose, genitals, everything, yes. Ah. Um, and so, yes. Were they mammals? Basically, yes. Ah. Uh, thank you. That, that, that helps greatly. So which of the Ascendant Masters were of Elohim? One moment. I'll see if I won't get in trouble for telling you. Yes, please do. Please continue. Yeah. <laughs> that was you. What was that? Oh, yes. I, I understand. All right. Hmm? I don't have a document around. You know, Sorry. that's all right. There is nothing here. So the question was, uh, which of the Ascendant Masters were from LA? Solomon. Wow. Buddha. Ah. Ezekiel. Two with their names the same almost. Which ones? One moment. Mm -hmm. They have many names. I have to find the earth name. They were both consumed into the sky without dying. And only Noah. 
Not you know what, no. Elijah and Elisha. Ah. <coughs> How about Jesus? Oh, yes, you're Jesus, yes. Also like him. Yes. Hmm. As well as John the Baptist. Ah. They all took on very different forms. Ah, and being called away. Hold on. There are several others that you might know, but I am not at liberty to tell the rest. Melchizedek? Okay, Melchizedek was definitely Elohim, yes. Ah. Although there's not much written about him. I read the Rancher book a little bit. Um, much of his history is assumed. Assumed meaning? It's, it's just forethought. Uh huh. <coughs> not forethought. Guest. Yes. I'll open the window so we'll air the question. So how about currently, uh, how many Elohim souls are incarnated on earth at the moment? Four. Four. Only four. There will be more. Any, any in my family? No. Hmm. Okay. I have to go. Oh, too bad. It was so interesting. It was getting very interesting. What else did you want to know? Uh, more and more about Elohim. What's the relation between Elohim and El? They are one and the same, but now they have separated themselves into different factions. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. And Elohim and I already asked it, but not from you. Elohim and Yael. They are not of the same origin, but they have interfaced in some centuries past. And uh, how much of Elohim DNA do we carry historically? Very little. Less, less than 1%? One 1.4. 1. Oh, that's already something. Is it directly from them to us or is Directly, it yes. Common ancestor? No, that's direct. Common ancestry would not be considered. I see. Thank you very much. Very important things you told us. That kind of... Well, and that has a lot of value to many. And I'm happy I'm not in trouble. All right, mm -hmm. I must go. I'll pass our invitation for him to come through and speak to us. Yes. Thank you.